God. This is going to be an upset, it looks like. Dad's not doing so well health-wise between August 23 and August 2024. He is shocked. This is almost like a futuristic thing that's happening. The future of the royal family. Somebody who isn't taking it anymore. Eighth house is revenge. He's getting some kind of revenge. We got a lot here, so uh, good to see you. Duke of Has. Um, I have mixed feelings about that name because it's derogatory. It is apparently what the palace calls the Duke of whatever, uh, Sussex. I can never remember. The Duke of Sussex behind closed doors. And it's interesting with the way the universe works. People are given their names, I believe, for a purpose. He was meant to be a hazard to the royal family. I'm sure he didn't want to when he was born and he wasn't thinking that that's what was going to happen. But it turns out that he is just going to get in there and make some change. And that's very uncomfortable for a lot of people. And whether it's the right change or not, and the right method is debatable. Yes, they, uh, they started calling him that like nine months ago. And it's so weird how Duke of Hazard and his name is, his nickname is Has. So funny that it, it's kind of coming together that he truly is, I mean, he exists to change something and uh, and maybe do it in what people think is a very hazardous way. This is Prince Harry's birth chart and this is his solar year. We didn't really go over this and <clears throat> let's start with a card. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of questions as far as what's happening right now, but I would like to know for uh, for Harry, does this mean that he is going to change his plans this year? Maybe living his career. Is there going to be some change for him that maybe means that he's going to be more over in England more? Let's see what it says. Will Harry have a complete change in his plans? Okay. All right. So we got the Ace of Wands. Oh. Let me put this here. Ace of Wands. So uh, what does that mean as far as plans? Well, when it's upright, it's pretty good. I think uh, he he's going to be okay. He is going to have options open to him. And so we'll see how that plays out. But also can show that there is a third eye could be also a female involved. Now, it kind of looks like Megan, doesn't it? I wonder if that might be a clue. So um, she's, I think what it means is that she might be helping him along, that she's being a supportive wife. So let's go over to the chart and... All right, so this is Prince Harry. By the way, I didn't mention this last time, but I talked a lot about publications and the news and everything. Well, the ninth house is also the courts and something that when I'm doing personal readings, often we look at the ninth house because there might be you know, custody hearings, divorce court, that kind of thing. So the ninth house for him in his solar year, which starts or started in September, mid-September and goes till this next September. That's really his year. There was a lot going on in the ninth house. And isn't it interesting? And I'm going to mark this up. And you'll read about this in my book, Forensic Astrology 101. Look at how Neptune is in the ninth house. And Neptune represents a mirror. And the ninth house, he was in court with a mirror. And he won a partial set settlement. So this would represent this kite to some extent 
that it was good news and he was able to gain success through the courts this year. Now, he, when he won the settlement, it was between December 15th and January 15th. Isn't that weird? Oh my God. So it was December 15th when the news came out about his win. So interesting. And so with Libra, that means the court. And also the south node means the truth. And also it means that you can let go that year of a court case. So that would be coming true for him early on in his year. It's nice when you get an idea of what you're going to let go of early on. And uh, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to let go of that. That's good. It's better than, you know, the car that I need, which would be in the third house, or uh, or a home. Now, it could also mean that he is going to move, which is the south node in the fourth house of home, means letting go of a home. Sometimes it just means moving. And I know that they are looking at places to live. So, uh, Angel D, I get the feeling that Kate and the King have serious health problems is somehow stopping MM Project and she's angry, just speculation, of course, possible. Um, I think that there also might be some things that she's not happy with. Um, she's not getting the right support and that shows up in a couple of their charts where there's some retrogrades and it's just not ready. And especially with such pressure, you have to feel like a perfectionist in order to launch anything. And so that can be a source of stress. Serendipity, you think he would go to Africa? Uh, Cyan, I think she played him in the early days. I was thinking about this and how, and you know, to a certain extent, I mean, if you want a prince, you've got to be strategic. Well, let's face it, you got to be smart. And uh, she did everything right. And on top of it, had that natural chemistry too, which, you know, you can strategize all you want, but it has to be that innate chemistry really that drives things forward. But I thought it was interesting how when she first started getting to know him and she didn't even know his name was Haz. And little did she know that she was texting someone that would literally be seen by the gray men, by those Englishmen, that he would be a complete hazard to all around him in his home, which of course I'm sure would have horrified him at the time if he had known that for his future. But we get pushed into certain roles that we never intended. And I think that happened with them. But arguable, of course, some of you said he was absolutely in charge of all of his decisions. But you you just can't anticipate what would happen after that wedding. It was just, it just seemed one thing after another. I think the biggest red flag was when they moved out of Kensington Palace. That was the first one. It was like, whoa, what's going on there? Like Prince William doesn't even want him in the same castle? That's crazy. So I think the drama began there. All right, now I'm going to circle. Here's another interesting thing too. In the last show, I was telling you, now if you draw your soul return chart and you'll get your date. So if you're, uh, say you start your year, if your birthday is January 5th, every house is going to start on the 5th. So it's almost like having another birthday in a sense, because you're advancing through this solar year. And so for Harry, every month for him starts on the 15th, which again is so wild that he got that win on January. Oh no, it was December 15th. Okay. So now we're getting to January 15th to February 15th. And the vertex is in there. This is a very important house that you should pay attention to. It means really the point of your year. And Sagittarius can show the court. It can show uh, foreign lands, traveling. And 
it also, ninth house can represent the father. And I say ninth house because Sagittarius represents the ninth house. You hear that more in, um, in Vedic astrology. But here's another thing I was talking about in the last show, and that is the fifth house. Look at where it is placed. It's the last degree in Scorpio, which means a change is about to come for his family. So big, you know, these things, you look at the chart and you don't really see anything, but then you start to drill down and you see some answers here. And so this is going to be the end phase for him. Now, I think it's probably going to be uh, maybe another year before things really accelerate, but there are going to be some momentous occasions. I think it was in the Princess Kate prediction where in her chart, it says there's going to be a historic announcement and that was coming in March. So we've already had a historic announcement, but there might be something else coming next month. So we are still in his fifth house here. Lots of family stuff going on. So he's dealing with that right now. And uh, we can also, in order to look more at the family house, we're going to look at Pluto. And Pluto is, uh, you know, eighth house matters. And it's part of this kite so he still might really be flying high, so to speak, on this news of the press winning against the mirror, the mirror in the ninth house. I mean, it's crazy how that is in there. And it means publications and also the court. Now, uh, it is in the sixth house. So this is the sixth house of health. And you can see this trine to Uranus. And so that's going to be between, well, that's, that would be when he would have this huge, huge, pretty much surprise. And it actually might work to his benefit, at least temporarily, because of this triangle or the uh, grand trine there. So as he is, it's really the fifth and sixth house right now that is being activated because of the fifth house being January 15th and February 15th, and also the Lord of the fifth in the sixth house of health and work. So in these next two months, it seems as if there's so much energy there that it's almost like it takes his breath away a little bit. Uh, it's kind of like it's like a rocket because of that Uranus and, uh, just, it's going to be, it's going to be a wild ride for the next two months for him. And let's see here. We can also see some other predictions. I think we should pick a card though. What do you guys want to ask? Um, Okay. Angel D, could looking for a new home mean home as in family? When both parents are gone, you feel like you've lost your home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fourth house, it's weird. The fourth house represents mom, but the fourth house Lord is dad. And the 10th house represents dad and the 10th house Lord represents mom. So if you have um, the South node close to your IC, which would be basically dad, uh, it could show, you know, loss or fear of loss. Most of the time though, it is that you're going to let go of something. A lot of times it's letting go of something tangible. I did not know that. See, and that's another thing I've been seeing in these charts too. There are, and we're going to see that with, uh, King Charles's chart, but, there are some hidden enemies and uh, they are, they've been comfortable for a while. And from what I'm seeing, this news came as an absolute shock, a total shock. And so I want to, I want to pull a card for that. But one thing I'm, I just happen to be seeing here is, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you how the Lord of the fourth would be dad and Venus is right in front of him. This is the King around him. And 
you would take these two planets, which would mean big Jupiter shock Uranus. Dad has a big shock and a big change. And so he doesn't want that. He does not want that change. And he is, he's upset about it, obviously. And who wouldn't, you know, you build your whole life to become this monarch and this is what happens. A couple of things to note is that from what I understand, those who rise to the throne often get unlucky. And so I almost think that in a way, Queen Elizabeth II, by delaying his reign for so many years, I mean, he really, really wanted it in my mind. Maybe she almost saved his life because he was able to exist without becoming ill. So something I thought of. And then uh, also, I forgot the second thing I was going to say. Um, something about, oh, yes. King, he's King, uh, or what is he? King Charles the Third. King Charles the Third means that there were two before him. And do we know the history of the two before him? Really goes to show you have to be careful of what you name your kid because it will play out with the same energy, I think. And King Henry the first was executed. Uh, I think he was beheaded. And, uh, and then his son was, he failed. They both had to live through a civil war. Sound familiar? Another war. War meaning in his relationships, in Charles's relationships. So, I just thought that was was remarkable that he would be named Prince Charles. And uh, hey, Penny, nice to see you. And uh, all right, let me go over to the cards again. And I want to know, I just keep seeing this. I want to know... Um, In fact, we should probably do a couple of cards on this one. But who are who are Harry's hidden enemies in in the castle? You know, in the inner circle, who are his real head, hidden enemies? The ones maybe who you know are not necessarily his family, but there there are some people who are really against him. And I would like to know I'd like to know information about that because those people, they are about to, I think they're, they just had a shock in the last couple of days. I really do. So tell us who the hidden enemies are. Oh, it's a girl by the beach. <laughs> Reversed three of wands. So I take that as uh, three people. And uh, they were thinking that they had it had it made, that they were heading on out and everything was great and they were about to do their thing and their whole world is upside down. So that's basically what I'm seeing. What I am seeing with his chart and Charles's charts is that their hidden enemies are really, I mean, it's like an earthquake. Thank you, Taurus Moon Tarot. Unmet expectations. I saw Charles and Diana when they visited a fish farm. My mom told Charles he looked handsome in his kilt and he said, flattery will get you everywhere. I love it. <laughs> Funny they went to a fish farm. Mm -hmm. We know about Neptune and this family. They can't get away. They can't get away from Neptune. Scandal. What symbols we see. Okay. I know, isn't it? Because when you know somebody, you see that they are not looking as good. So it might not be as big of a surprise to those who are closest to him, but I still think they're wondering what is going to happen now. That makes sense with uh, Three of Wands, unmet expectations. Okay. They were expecting something from Harry and they didn't get it.
you know, maybe we can get a clarification card on anything that Harry, Harry, not, I'm not going to say Harry and Megan because it might be different. Anything that Harry has to watch out for when he heads over and spends some time with his family. What does he have to watch out for? Somebody young, somebody young who, hmm, this is like a, a junior person, I would say. So um, I don't know his inner circle, but uh, it looks like somebody is having a really good time and they're excited about something. What could they be excited about? What is, what could people right now within the inner circle, I mean, it's so dour there right now and dire. What could a person possibly be excited about? Could it be, I'm thinking like a will, money, um, titles, what is it? Oh, so they're excited that will is coming in and it's a young person that's excited, but that Harry should watch out for that young person. That's what I'm getting. What do you think? Oh, and pages bring news too. That's right. It's a, it's like a mercury card. So somebody that's going to maybe bring Harry news. There's a little girl in desperate to meet Diana. She was walking over to our group when their handlers ex escorted her into the fishery and she just waved at us. I'd have cried if she'd have come over. All right. Oh, we're going to do that one. Let me tell you, that's going to be another, I don't like to come down too hard on Camilla because, you know, you just have to have empathy for people and she had a destiny just like Harry. She was the bad guy for a long time. She knows how it feels. So there should be some kind of empathy, I think, with Harry. Emperor could mean news of control or a power shift. So interesting how the cards are really reflecting what's going on right now. And you know, it's also nice to see some good cards like the other night when I was doing Taylor Swift's cards. And that second card where everybody was celebrating, I wonder if that was a clue telling us that that uh, Travis is going to win the Super Bowl. I think that might be it. We'll have to we'll have to revisit that one. January 15th to February 15th. It's at the end cusp of Scorpio, which of course is the basically the end of the family monarchy, okay? I say this could be months, but I'm going to say it's within the year, okay? Because 2026 is monumental. So I think 2025 might be gearing up towards 2026. Then we have February 15th coming up to March 15th. Pluto there, uh, this is intense energy. I think more potential news about Ninth House Matters, uh, more potential news about maybe another win because this is, it, it looks pretty positive. At least that part does. I don't see any squares or oppositions, <clears throat> but you got to think that there's probably going to be some discomfort, some awkwardness. Now the sixth house represents, here's the, here's the second part. Got to look at the ruler of the month. The ruler of the month between February 15th and March 15th is going to be Saturn. There you go. That's the challenge right there. That's dad. And he's going to be there. Yes. Okay. So February 15th to March 15th, talking to dad, March is ruled by Aquarius and Uranus is up here. It's part of this huge grand trine. This is Megan in his solar return chart. This is Harry. He's supporting her. Pluto, just wild success. Lots of help to his career. Oh, but uh, there's a little problem. Who's this? That's dad. And he says, he, he's, he's not directly putting a, the kibosh on it, but he, there's some kind of stop on this Jupiter retrograde. Hmm. It's the ninth house. 
uh, that's the court. <sighs> Don't know what that is. Jupiter. Um, it could represent the family. Jupiter is in here with the fifth house. So it's possible that he's like, you know, I'm really happy with all your success, but we're going to need you back here. So that's a possibility. But there's definitely something coming from dad that is a big, big cut. And it is in Taurus. So an, again, another confirmation that it could be cutting his money off. Look at the, the big grand trine. It's part of that kite. And it's connected with Neptune, which can mean sparklies. Stuff that sparkles diamonds. She's, she's doing a diamond line. Now, remember, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if she did that because I think one of her partners just, you know, made like a billion dollars doing that. There's a couple of people that she lives near who are like, Megan, what are you doing? Get over there onto QVC and you never have to deal with these royals again. And she's like, that's not a bad idea. And I don't even have to be on camera. Okay, let's do it. It's not such a, uh, it, it's not such taboo anymore to be on QVC. Cyan Charles has often been bitter. I personally don't take to him. Mm -hmm. A big red H just popped up on my laptop in an ad. Hmm. What do you think that means? I, I don't know. Well, uh, an angry Harry, maybe that's what that means. Um, yeah, he cut everyone's money off. One thing what happens as we age, we become that Saturn. And, you know, during our life, a man is going to be Mars. As women, we are Venus. And then we start to get a little bit older and we become Venus Saturn or a man becomes Mars Saturn. Then we moved full on Saturn. And sometimes, you know, you have to look at your Saturn in your birth chart to see what kind of old person you're going to be. But Saturn in general is somebody who is, is kind of grumpy. So, I mean, that's what you're supposed to be. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're not, but that's the kind of energy you complain. You're slow. Of course you're going to complain because you've got Saturnian stuff on you all the time. Just a lot of blocks, health problems. It just, it's all, it goes on and on and on and on. And you become, as an older person, often depressed because you're getting that Saturnian energy. And it's basically, we're getting training as to what that energy from Saturn is. There it is. Enjoy for 20 or 30 years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's no picnic, but it involves finding your your responsibility. You become very responsible. I always thought it was funny how, you know, retired people are supposed to hang out, you know, and enjoy and go on vacation, but there's something inherent in them that suddenly they absolutely need to often dig into a project and work, work, work. And if they do things like sleep in a little bit, they get very upset with themselves. And anyway, it's a whole, it's a whole case study on being old. I won't bore you with it, but just trying to get inside the head of Charles. And yes, he's grumpy. A lot of things, I mean, he's the king for God's sakes. You know, he can be grumpy if he wants, but I'm seeing that, isn't it interesting that Harry, he has a kite taking off, which was a major win against the mirror in court. The mirror is a publication. And now here, part of that kite is Megan in there. Keeping in mind, Uranus is still retrograde. She's doing okay. But maybe next year when her planet is not retrograde, she's going to be a little bit stronger. Right now, it just seems as if she's just, she's trying, but she's not at a hundred percent. Also keep in mind, weird how Venus represents his wife, always represents the wife, but also represents dad. So both of them are, are blocking something that has to do with 10th house things. Now in Megan's case, if we were to see this and square to Jupiter, 
Jupiter represents the ninth house of foreign lands. So forget her traveling to where you want to go. She's not doing it. Um, it also shows um, vacations too. They're enjoying vacations, which I think they did already in, in the past few months. But uh, she doesn't want to go on vacation wherever this represents. But they did go on vacation. Uh, looks like it. Mars in Libra. I know. Didn't they go to Jamaica? And they met with a man who was in the government or something like that. A politician. They met a politician. I think that's what it was. Libra. Okay, Melanie. So if Saturn is in the same sign and house as Jupiter and Venus, is there a less noticeable change as a person ages? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good question. And we're going to get a lot of people because there are a lot of people who were born with Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto during you know COVID and everything. But with Venus there, um, it can show like having the funds to do things. I think it does lighten up, but it just depends. It depends on what is transiting over it. Saturn can show a lot more grumpy, <laughs> a lot more like old. But at the same time, um, you could say that... Um, you know, Jupiter is very expansive. Jupiter is very happy, but Saturn is very practical about it. So yes, we have all of this abundance, but let's be conservative with all that's coming in. And I really like Jupiter and Venus together too, because that means a lot of money. So I think, I think that combination actually could be very good. Yeah. I think I saw that too. I know that pen. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's funny that, uh, well, Mercury represents a pen, so you can see you can <laughs> you can see King Charles not wanting to use a pen, um, at least during Prince Harry's solar return chart between September 2023 and 2024. And so anybody who is just joining us, we are looking at currently Prince Harry's solar return chart, which starts in September. And for yours, it starts on your birthday and goes around your year will go to your next birthday. And keep in mind, it starts with the day that you were born. For him, it was the 15th. Then it keeps going every 15th day and can really show some good predictions there. Now, here's something, you know, I see Chiron there on the MC. That's pretty strong. And then on top of it, you have the North Node. Now that is going to be um, March. It's going to be July. And it doesn't look too bad. There's a nice trine to Venus um, military. So that could possibly be that, you know, they're out there with the wounded veterans. Chiron is wounded. Aries is warriors. So that could be something that they're doing and that they're happy about and that there are a lot of them because North Node means a lot. And then, ooh, okay. Well, you always look around the wheel to see if you can um, spot a fixed star, a cusp on a fixed star. And we've got something pretty close to Algol here, which is the devil. And it's going to represent his hopes and dreams, his friendships, and the social media. It is, that's weird, represents his dad and his wife. <laughs> so, um, maybe just take what their ideas are this year and uh, take them with a grain of salt because there could be mm, just, you know, it's Algol. Algol. Here's another thing. Algol could also be again, yet again, being like a bully to Megan and Charles. 
you know, 11th house is social media. So there could be some really nasty things that are coming out about both of them. So that's a possibility. Uh, 11th house. Yeah. Hopes and dreams. Um, he might, he might have some, some crazy ideas for this year on what he wants to do. And then also just to finish this up, hidden enemies, 12th house. What is in the hidden enemy house? We have a uh, part of fortune and we also have cancer. So we're going to look to the moon and the moon is in the third house of brother and siblings. We have a little bit of an opposition with, uh, with the, with Neptune here. So this could be people who are, have some secrets, um, are part of a scandal, yet another scandal. <clears throat> so, you know, you just have to steer clear of the uncles and the cousins. Don't, don't go talking to the cousin all the time. Not this year, just be polite, have fun, and don't go spilling your secrets. But, uh, cause that could be a conflict of interest. You can see how there is a point of fortune here. He has success against the mirror. That's what his success is going to be this year. Yet you can also see, I mean, in general, part of fortune isn't like that great because it means a loss. What what's in the 12th house is a loss for that year. And you can see that there's a big T square here. Oops, God, I need a ruler. See that triangle, which is a T square? And something is getting in the way of his, um, his career, his work, his success this year. And that is what he's going to get this year. Remember the North node is what he's going to receive. So when you have a, a T square towards, especially the 10th house, now that's government. It can be benefits. It, I don't think he's getting benefits, um, but it's like the 10th house usually means you're going to change your career and you do it like you're definitely going to change your career that year. So when you get the North node in the 10th, but he can't. And I will bet you it's because of what's happening with the royal family. If what is happening or currently is going on with the royal family was not happening right now, he would not have that T-square there. He's not going to be able to switch like he wants. And what a great year. What a great opportunity to do that. So at least he did get that win. It wasn't for hardly any money, but it was a good first step, I think, set some precedents, I guess. Uh, let's see. Now, on the other hand, there is a career win with this grand trine. And it's something devious. It has to do with money. And it is, it is a somebody who's in the court because this is right on Regulus. Notice how Black Moon Lilith is on Regulus. Yeah, I think so. He's supposed to get a new career, but he can't, not this year. But it looks like there is, it's almost like he recognizes that he can't do it. And then he goes around and does something else. And he might use whoever, who, whoever's in here. There's somebody in there that might be playing both sides and is helping him with his career of some, some sort. So this almost to me makes me think that they are offering some kind of they, meaning, you know, the family, but it's really not. Black Moon Lilith is temptation. It comes in the form of something that looks really good, but might not always be so good for you. And this temptation comes from the king. 
So there's something strategic that they're doing that's going to allow him to do something. It could be for the military, and he's super excited about it. So it to me, it looks it doesn't look all for naught. Yeah, the major thing he is blocked, but then he's got the win to the court, so that's one. Then he's got a win with the family, which is whoever this nefarious Coltier is. And then it looks like Megan puts the kibosh on it. Look at her. See how this red line comes down and she says, no, you're not doing that. Oh, oh you're excited about it? I don't think so. So I think there's an opportunity. There's a temptation. That's your temptation for the year. That black moon Lilith. Don't go towards Black Moon Lilith. You know, Megan's smart. She knows. She sees. So nix that. At least he has the opportunity. Now, if you're looking really hard, you can see a basket. It's upside down, which is not good. Something is pouring out. And... I'm not really seeing anything that you could pour into. <laughs> so, you know, I think there's still going to be some really good things for him this year, but it's, you you see part of fortune. It's not, it's not going to be the best year for him. And however, that one thing that they're super excited about is probably going to be Megan. Megan is just going to, she's going to knock it out of the pack and uh, it's going to be good. It could, this grand trine with Black Moon Lilith, it could potentially be okay. Um, I mean, that's what he's supposed to get. He is supposed to get something, could be something military related. We'll see. He'll have to negotiate that. Vertex is travel. You know, it might have something to do with the Invictus, Invictus stuff, you know, that, uh, I don't know. They want to do something with the palace or something. Okay. So I'm boring you to tears. Now this is uh, Prince Harry for 2024. And uh, before, and I talked a little bit about it in the last show, we've got Black Moon Lilith right next to him. It's like in his ear. And, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, maybe. Family responsibilities, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, to some extent, yeah. That T-square, I think that comes from the royals. <laughs> Angel, what is this? <laughs> yeah, Neptune could be photos. Yeah, I mean, you know, photos, scam. They're already saying that something's a hoax. I don't know, something they did with Netflix or something. So you're going to hear the word hoax a lot. He has the same red basket you named before that Diana had. Oh, okay. Why the Royals? Because whenever you get the last degrees of, of Leo, that's usually somebody. Now, if it's for us mere mortals, it's somebody who's named King or somebody who's like, maybe has a very high position somewhere and, you know, gives us a job or we're talking to them or marrying them or something. But, uh, and you know, the Royals have these and degrees all the time in their charts. So in this case, there's somebody who's royal who doesn't have, oh, this is interesting, doesn't have his best interest. This is, somebody's trying to give him something. Look at this. In fact, maybe it's easy for me to do this. And okay, so it goes here. Okay, that's to get. Okay, the royal's give him something. North node is what you're going to get in your year. Okay. And then it goes here and then here. Okay. But look, not only does Megan not want him to do it. And remember Venus also represents the father, which is the Lord of the fourth house, but this is definitely his dad too. And his dad says, no, you are not not doing that. And because they're both in the second house here, this could be two people or a group of people who are um, 
might be royals or something. And he's like, absolutely not your nice idea, son, but it's not happening. You know, I don't want to create any wars. Oh, thank you. <gasps> Fixed star regulus. Yep, exactly. This is way too far ahead. I know, but I'm ju I just have it in there. And, you know, Venus represents wife as usual and is uh, representing the eighth house too. Uh, and this is, I'll bet you that venture that she's doing is just continuing to take off. It continues to look good. And there, everybody is seeing them in their relationship and it's, it's happy. Jupiter's happy. I mean, it looks happy for them, but we have dad here. And dad is not approving of something. Look at this T-square here. It could either be that or it could just be that there are their family, fifth house family, issues that need to be f figured out. And it's really, it's stopping them maybe from being happy to some extent that year. I don't know, but that, that doesn't look good. Now, Jupiter represents, Jupiter represents the kids. Jupiter is kids five or, five or six or older. Mercury is little babies and infants and toddlers. Maybe something that has to do with the kids. It also represents the work too. So constantly they, you know, looking at these charts, it really gives you an understanding of like, what the hell are they supposed to do? You know, they're just constantly getting blocked to, I mean, I know they've got millions from, you know, from investments and all that stuff, but they need to continue to make money and, you know, do their thing. And they are just getting a no constantly. So it must be very difficult. And I think we can all identify with what they're going through because as you push forth, sometimes you just can't get that traction. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, probably not a good idea. I noticed that when we were talking about Mars in her 12th house, when you see something, let's say Mars for you in, in her case, it represents her MC, which is her career. It's in the 12th house, which means your career is, it, it, it's kind of, it disappears. In her case, it was a good thing that it did because she got to marry a prince and do all that stuff. But uh, Mars also represents mom. And you can see that mom, she has a very loving mom, pretty mom who is uh, Venus here in the third house, local mom, you know, mom's going to be close by yet. This intrigued me and I'm only talking out loud, but mom doesn't like this right here. And it almost looks like, I mean, it's Harry, Megan together and Jupiter represents Maybe it's going to a foreign place. Jupiter represents foreign places. So maybe she doesn't like when they travel or something, but there's something she doesn't like about this here. Could be all of the drama. She just wants her, her daughter to be in a place that feels good, but there's definitely seems like mom gets upset about something and it, it seems like she has to do something behind the scenes. Venus is your money. And so you know, Venus in Virgo is like a fashion designer. You know, we, we get on her because, you know, oh, she's got to have all the, the nice things. They're a mess and the blanket in the back. And, you know, she has to have the finest things. But remember Venus, she's Venus in Virgo and Virgo's clothing. So she, if she wanted to, she could be the next Victoria Beckham. I mean, she has it. So that's a possibility that that might, not to say that she would do it, but if she did it, she would do it very well. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's getting too, too much temptation there. That could be that black moon Lilith, that, that temptation to be a Royal 
to do something that dad is not going to be approving. Uh, I went through Megan's charts in the last show. I just want to look at this one more time, how we were talking about how, you know, this is August 4th, you know, September, October, November, get over to here. We've got February 4th. Saturn is conjunct this line that starts February 4th. I will bet you that she heard maybe around the third or the fourth about what happened. I mean, maybe they knew earlier, but this was right at the time dad, Saturn, who was sick, retrograde, you know, they, they heard about him and they were very sad with Saturn there. This is a sad month, especially when it's on a cusp. When a planet is on a cusp, it's really going to affect you. So uh, Neptune and Jupiter are going to rule the month. So obviously ninth house is foreign lands. And I said in the other show that it could be a very famous film. There's a film and it's of the family. I think it might just be famous photographs that they're all together or something. I think, I think it's possible that maybe they're putting together some kind of creative thing. I know it's hard to imagine, but it sure seems like there's something that's being put together. Now, remember it is in the seventh house too. So this is Harry. Harry is doing something that is very, very famous that is in the ninth house. Why is it famous? Because of the moon. Moon is adding to Jupiter and to Pluto. That's ginormous fame. What the hell is it? Okay. Jupiter and the moon is very famous. It's a film. It's foreign. It's a foreign place. Yeah, I think it could be just famous photos that are being taken of him. Maybe as he's at the airport, <laughs> Uranus being an airport. But I guess we're going to see, we're going to see for her what that entails. The next month, and I know this is a show about Harry, so I'll stop, but uh, Mars rules her next month. And she's upset about those photos. Ooh. Hmm. Mars is to be angry. So there's something that she's angry about. But at the same time, there's part of fortune in the eighth. So it looks like something is going to happen that is favorable for her. All right. Well, I better go because... I have the next show about King Charles coming up, so I hope you can join me. Uh, Megan and Kate have fake domains and spend much of the time hating each other online. Do you think? I hope not. I hope. I hope she's. I hope they're both too busy for that. Um, so maybe she'll be a Bond girl. Oh my God, she really could do whatever she wants right now. Do you think Charles will be gone by twenty twenty five? I do. I do. Um, but for whatever reason, I think things are going to be put in place in the next 12 months. So <laughs> I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Kate and Megan are related of fighting to have William's energy in the past life. And William is given his place to rule because he has loved a person whom loved others in the arts to be joyful. Following Harry around with cameras <laughs> seem boring. I agree. Um, okay. And, uh, hello, mother of cycle breakers, but it's something I can be. Yeah. I, and that's the temptation of it. It's like, if you knew that something was going to make you, you know, basically you can step out of all the criticism and say, Hey, I did this. I was successful at it. I'm tired of you guys bullying me. Of course, there's going to be that temptation to do it. So thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm going to be on again at 10 p.m. Eastern to talk about King Charles. So see you then. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe.